Hey y'all, so as you can tell, I have taken the leap and I have posted my Bible study video for Matthew chapter one. My other Bible study video was so well received and I was so thankful that it helped so many people. And a lot of you asked if I could do it again. And so it took me a while to take the leap. I was really scared because I was afraid I was gonna mess it up. Like, I don't wanna mess up the word of God. That's a lot of pressure, but after talking with a lot of friends and family, um, I decided to take the leap. So I hope that this can help you. Please know that I'm not a Bible scholar in any way. I'm just a student of the word. I'm just a student of the word, just like you are. And I'm using as many resources as possible. I'm using um, all of the versions of the Bible, getting different types of wording to help me understand it better. But I always encourage you to dig deeper and to do your own research and and digging into the word because because this is this is how I'm doing it and you need to seek the Lord on your own. You know, you cannot get to heaven through my salvation, but only through your salvation. So I just encourage you to not take my word for it. And I just pray in Jesus' name that if I say anything that is untrue, that you would totally forget it, that it would be erased from your mind and that the Lord just fills your heart and mind with only truth. So I hope that this can help you. Hope it's not too boring. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for following along. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I got a bigger Bible here today, just so you can see what I'm writing, so it's not so far away. But we're gonna start in Matthew chapter one, and it starts off with the genealogy of Jesus. And um, we don't know who exactly the author of Matthew is. We're assuming it's Matthew, um, mainly because. Matthew was very smart. He knew a lot about numbers. You know, he was a tax collector. And Matthew talks more about numbers than any other book in the Bible. So that's why they're kind of assuming that it that it was Matthew. There's some other reasons too that you can go look up, but that's what I've gathered. Short, um, short little explanation. Okay, so the genealogy of Jesus is very, very important because it points to Jesus because there's all these prophecies that happened leading up to Jesus's birth. And if they wouldn't have happened exactly like God said they would, then nobody would believe that he was actually the Messiah. So that's why the genealogy is so important. So I'm gonna write that. I'm going to write, the genealogy of Christ is important because it shows proof of prophecies fulfilled. All right, so I'm gonna highlight this in blue. I'm just gonna highlight the chapter title. This is a Christian Standard Bible. Um, I have looked at this chapter in a lot of different versions, including the King James Version, and um, in this chapter, nothing much seemed different, in my opinion. Um, but I also always encourage you to go back and look at as many versions as possible, um, as many commentaries as possible, so that you can get a full understanding. This is just um, a quick rundown of what I found out. So, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, let's talk about, so whenever I see Jesus Christ, I'm gonna underline it and put a cross. So, son of David, son of Abraham. So I'm gonna put a little arrow and say, um, the prophecy said that the Messiah was to come from these lines. Um, you can find those verses, um, or those prophecies in Genesis 12.3. So we're going to look, I'm not going to read of this but I want to point out some things that I thought were really interesting I'm going to point out Tamar um, Rahab Ruth and Uriah's wife so out of all of this genealogy these are the only four women that are mentioned and um, the, the reasoning is actually pretty cool so Tamar neglected she was a neglected widow who used deceit to get her inheritance. I'm gonna write that. Okay, Rahab was a prostitute. Ruth 
Ruth was King David's great grandmother. Okay, so she was not Israeli. Is that how you say it? Is Israeli? Israeli? I don't know. I'm not a Bible scholar, guys. Oh, those look, colors look a lot alike. That's not cool. And then Uriah's wife was actually Bathsheba, and she committed adultery with David. So, what do these four women have in common? Well, three of them are sinners. Um, one of them was deceitful, one of them was a prostitute, one of them was an adulterer, adulteress. Um, and then your, your Ruth wasn't of Israeli descent, um, but yet she was still placed in this line of Jesus. So the fact that these four women are in the line of Jesus Christ, and they are sinners, means that God's grace is reaches beyond anything that we can comprehend and that he loves us so much and that he he can take the least of these and place them in royal heritage even if you're a sinner so i thought that was pretty cool so i'm gonna write something like that I put, mentioning these four women shows God's grace and that he reaches far beyond Israel to every nation. God can lift the lowest, God can lift the lowest and place them at the highest. And if this isn't what you feel like God's trying to tell you, then you need to write something different. Please, like don't take my word for it. I want you to take God words, God's word for it, not mine. Um, I'm just here to help you along if you need any help and show you how I do it. Okay, so we're going to go all the way down. I'm going to lift my Bible up a little bit. We're going to go all the way down um, to, and Josiah fathered Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. So at the time of the exile to Babylon means... Um, this is when King Nebuchadnezzar took the southern tribe of Judah in captivity in Babylon. You know, like that. Alright, we're going to keep going. And then we're going to go all the way down here. And Jacob fathered Joseph, the husband of Mary, who gave birth to Jesus, who was called the Christ. Alright, so... I thought, in my commentary, I thought that this was really, really cool. It talks about how um, Joseph obviously isn't Jesus' biological father. He's his, he's his adoptive father. And the culture of this time considered adoption to be real sonship. Um, Jesus had no biological relation to Joseph, but he continued his family line. And that is straight from my Bible commentary, and that's exactly what I'm going to put because I really want to remember that. So all the generations from Abraham to David, I'm going to put Abraham, Abraham to David, David were 14 generations. And from David until the exile of Babylon, 14 generations. And from exile of Babylon until Jesus, 14 generations. So this is another reason why they think that Matthew was the author, because he's talking numbers here. Um, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write the number 14. So David in Hebrew values the number 14. I don't understand that. Um, you might need to go look that up yourself. Um, I'm not a numbers person, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and it shows the natural divisions in history.
Okay, so now we're going to go into the nativity of the Christ, Jesus' birth. Okay, the birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So whenever I see the Holy Spirit, I'm going to put like a little backwards S, like a little wispy. My grandma taught me to do that. Um, before they came together. That's so important to know that they that she got pregnant before they came together, obviously, because people would have thought that Joseph was the father. So I'm going to write that. I'm going to put... Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. So in this time, if somebody broke the law, I guess in this case, um, like had sexual relations before you were married, um, you were stoned to death. Um, but my commentary said that at this time they were kind of going away from that and just doing like a huge public disgracing of the person. So I'm going to put the penalty was death. Or public disgrace. Sorry, you can't see the end of that, but it says the, the penalty was death or public disgrace. But after he had considered these things, an angel, oops, after he considered these things, an angel, I'm going to put a little halo over that, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. I can't look at my little squiggly on that. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. I didn't realize how significant this was. Um... So this angel instructs Joseph to name him. And what that meant back then is the father named the child. So this gives Joseph permission to act as his earthly father, as, as his adoptive father. So I'm gonna write that. All right. Now, all of this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel. God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord's angel had commanded. That's an ugly looking halo. He married her, but did not have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to the son. So this goes with this. It had to happen just like this um, because people would have thought that Joseph was the one that got her pregnant and was the father so he did not touch her so that people would believe that he was the Messiah son of God and that wraps up chapter one I hope this was helpful and I hope it wasn't so shaky but I will meet you back here soon for chapter two bye guys Thank you.